Hey everyone, I just wanted to get back on. I know I did a video yesterday, I don't usually do them like two days in a row, but um, I noticed yesterday in my video I spoke a little bit about um, relationships, not settling, not settling for a mediocre life, you know, and um, I mentioned something about like a soulmate and I wanted to clarify what I meant by soulmate because I think a lot of people think as a soulmate as just having this one person out there that is just for you and and stuff like that and um that sounds good but it sounds a little unbelievable too at the same time and so what I want to do is kind of clarify what I mean by soulmate and when I say soulmate that doesn't just apply to a romantic relationship. That can apply to your friendships, your relationships with family. Like you, once you reach a certain um, level in your spiritual journey, you'll start to attract your soul family. And your soul family isn't necessarily your blood family, like um, we're used to viewing family as, although people from your blood family can be a part of your soul family. So anyways, what a soulmate is, is somebody who, most importantly, you're vibrating at the same level that they are. So that's why when we talk about in, in relationships in terms of love, like romantic relationships, um, that's why we say like if you don't love yourself, if you're not vibrating at this love frequency, you can't attract somebody that will love you. Um, you'll attract somebody that is vibrating the same vibration as you. So if you're feeling kind of miserable most of the time, you'll probably manifest a miserable partner in your life. And a lot of times in relationships, um, one partner or the other will start going on a spiritual journey or raise their vibration. You don't have to be spiritual to raise your vibration. Um, that can happen naturally just by following your intuition and being true to who you are. So what will happen is one person will start to outgrow the other person. And um, that's tough. That's a tough situation because there's two options. Either the other person will start to feel the raised vibration and the energy, the good energy from their significant other. And they will also be triggered to make changes in their life, to be more positive, to raise their vibration and to, you know, um, bring about positive change in their life and they can grow together or they grow apart. Like once that person remains stagnant, they don't change, they don't want to change, they don't, they think everything they perceive and the way they perceive it is just that's how it is and I know everything and they have no desire to grow. So the other individual a lot of times will outgrow the relationship or they just weren't compatible to begin with and that's okay too. But um, it is possible to salvage a relationship. I'm not saying like in my previous video that if you um, things seem mediocre that it's unsalvageable, like that's not the case. But a lot of times, most of the time, when one person starts to grow, um, the other person doesn't necessarily follow. And that's just because you got into the relationship at the same vibration and the other person just outgrew it. And that's okay. Like, we have to accept in our culture that it's okay to outgrow a relationship. But back to um, soul family. Um, for instance, I have, like, my best friend, she is my soulmate. She's my soulmate in a friend sense. She is part of my soul family. Um, we met each other before like when we were still in the matrix, if you want to call it that, when we were still asleep, when we still weren't conscious, when we still, when we were like stagnant and not growing, we were vibrating lower. But it was meant to be because even though when distance separated us, we still kind of went on our own path and we both um, found this spiritual journey and still are like the best of friends today. Um, regardless of the fact she's always in India and I'm here with my kids. Like it's cool because when you have... Um, when you have like a soulmate and a friend form, first of all, distance doesn't mean anything. Like if you're apart, that love is still there, that connection is still there, and you pick it right up where you left off. Also with soulmates, like you have a lot of things in common, but you also, the things that you don't have in common are complementary towards each other. So 
for instance, my best friend is like single and she's kind of like, she travels and has fun and, you know, explores and I vicariously live through her when we have our conversations and then she kind of like, she has that desire to have kids, but she's not sure. So I, she kind of vicariously lives through me when we have conversations. It's kind of cool. Like we compliment each other in that way. We're very different, but we're also so connected and we're supposed to be here for each other. And we can share different insights and perceptions with each other that can help us grow in different ways in our life. Her opinion I value so much because she sees life from a different angle and vice versa. So, <clears throat> yeah. And another point I wanted to make is that in romantic relationships, you can have many, many different soulmates out there. There's not just one person. Uh, and I know they talk about twin flames and stuff, but that's a whole different thing. I think that you could have one more than one of those as well. But um, yeah, that's a whole different video. But anyways, soulmates are like anybody who is vibrating at the same frequency, same frequency as you when you are at that high frequency when you found that love that joy and you're being consistently feeling that in your life and then you will manifest a person who is also in that same joy love happiness frequency as you but you share a lot of things in common and then you have that cool like contrast to complement each other. There are many, many, many people out there that could be your soulmate and that you could just click with and you could have bliss and, you know, heaven on earth with. Um, it's not just one person because I feel like a lot of people lose hope when they think it's just one person out there. How could I ever find this one person? That's like false. It's not true. It just seems like it's a rarity because A, most of us, um, if we're living through our program minds, which most people are, because we have been programmed in our culture, if we're living in that way, it seems we're not manifesting that, and it seems like it's so far out of reach, because we just don't understand how the process works. Um, but it's not out of reach, because once you, the funny thing is, once you reach that, all of a sudden, there's like, it seems like a million people to choose from that are also vibrating at the same frequency as you, and are ready to share love in a genuine way and they've done so much work on themselves like they're going to treat you properly you're going to treat them properly and it's going to be a relationship that's smooth um and most people just aren't there and it's just because we have this perception of how relationships are supposed to work in our culture that is completely false and it gets us trapped and it gets us um thinking that we have to be with somebody that we shouldn't be with and yeah, we just have to work on ourselves. Like if you don't work on yourself, then you're not going to be able to manifest um, your soul family or your soul mate or mates. You also could be with, meant to be with like one person at this period in your life and then another person in a different period of your life. And that's okay. That's why I think marriage is kind of creepy. Like why are we getting paperwork and stuff uh involved in our intimate relationships why does the government have anything to do with them i think a lot of people just in them because like there's socio-economic benefits to like uh being married in terms of like i don't know like doing your taxes and it's just we were programmed that's why they had marriage had they had for marriage to begin with it had to do with things like that and and, and now it's kind of like this mental Thing where people feel trapped because they signed this piece of paper. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. We're so programmed to think that it's normal, but it's really not. It's really weird, actually. <laughs> like, and then we feel like this horrible person because we got a divorce because of some stupid ass piece of paper. Like, it really is that stupid. Because true love, that all that stuff is irrelevant. What's relevant is like the connection you're sharing and the moments that you share with people your loved ones, your family, your friends, and and your significant other, like in your kids and all that. That's what's that's what's important. It's not these um these ideals that were formed and stuff. Those don't matter. What matters is how you feel <laughs> from on a moment to moment basis. So, um yeah, I just want to get on here and clarify that because uh I feel like I kind of left it out in the open yesterday and it was kind of confusing. So I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will catch you later.